so I think there's a small chance I might have just clipped a rock when I was reversing out of the driveway today. Yeah. Time to see if we can fix it. God, that is a light wheel. <laughs> so now I've got the wheel off, I'm going to get a better look at the damage. And I think, I mean, these clips just need to go back in. This bit here is bent but not snapped, so that should be all right. I think the only real damage is this, so we're going to be missing a right running light until we can order a new one, I suspect. That kind of thing, I might be able to fix it. I'm just going to start by actually removing the bumper more so I can get a better look, particularly at this running light, and see if it is fixable. Because I suspect a new running light will be hella expensive. And of course now it's raining. I've just pulled this out of the daytime running light and I think that might just be fixable. So we shall see. And this is the other one, I think it's the main connector. And it's snapped a little bit, but it might still. I'm gonna try, see if I can get this back onto the light now. I'm gonna see if I can remove this wheel arch liner here, get better access to the light and everything. Now I don't know if we ever formally introduced this car, this is our, our daily driver, Hyundai i20, affectionately known as Stitch because it kind of reminds us of Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. We bought this brand new for a ridiculously good price and overall very happy with it, which is why I'm a bit annoyed with myself for doing this. So I think the line is ready to out now. But pull that out around the way, there we go. Much better. There we go. So what we have is this connector here was ripped clean off. I don't know if I'll need to solder that back on or if it can just be a, yeah, I think those actually connections have broken. And obviously this one needs its wires back on, so I might take this into the workshop and have a look at it. And as I think this is the first time filming in the new workshop, I'll just give a quick tour. So, read on the workbench here. Got a shit ton of sprays and stuff. Finally got those mounted. Still got some stuff to sort out, like a lot of that needs to go into the tool chest in the garage, but for the most part, it's a really nice space, especially attached to the house. Anyway, back to this shit. So, this connector has definitely snapped the wires from here. Uh, it's probably gonna be a replacement bulb but I can't actually see how to remove this bulb so I don't know if it's meant to be a kind of fixed for life non-service part type job but let's see what I can do. Well I was just messing around with it and I've managed to push the bulb in so that is of no use to anyone. If anything I've made it worse. Alright. Okay that's progress. And um, we have a screw. Let's see what happens when we undo this. Keep on doing shit until something happens. That's the way we do. I'm gonna put this underneath it because I don't want to scratch up the lens. Okay, so that has not done what I expected. Okay, on closer inspection, this is just the back of the light housing, so it's clearly non-removable. From looking at it, this would have been installed with the lens in place. So I'm gonna try and somehow maneuver this bulb out. It's going to be a challenge, but actually it's going better than I expected. Yes! Sorry if you couldn't see any of that, but the bulb is free. So now I've just got to fix the new problem of the little shield that I undid. Let's see if I can get that back in place using nothing but fancy finger work. Here we go. Hey, I'm pretty good at this. I've managed to screw that reflector back in. So this is now all good to go. 
I don't think it's even worth trying to fix this, it's just a bulb, so I'm going to replace that one. I can't figure out how to get the terminals out of this plug, I don't even know if it's possible. If one of our more knowledgeable viewers could let us know, that'd be awesome, but anyway, what I'm going to do for now is put her back together without the light, and just go to some like parts shops, see if I can find new bulb, new connector, and then put those back together. These two we got just like stray wires here, so if they made contact that would short out the circuit for that light, so I'm just going to run some electrical tape over those for now. This is the downside to not having Misty up and running, otherwise we could just take a Misty out to buy the parts and not have to put stitch back together temporarily, but what can you do? So that's only just there, temporarily, until we fix it properly. Right, now let's try and figure out how this bumper goes back together. I've also just noticed that this bit here has actually sheared off the bumper, so I might have to kind of plastic weld or glue that back into place at some point. Now this, I'm pretty sure, is all just clips. I need to go in the right place. Why won't you go in your home? Oh, that's why it's meant to go on top. I was just trying to put it in the wrong place. That's better. <laughs> that's a lot easier. Oh, look at that. Easy when you know how. But actually, that all clips in quite nicely. You'd hardly even know. So now it's just the last few clips on this liner. So it's a few days later, and I think I've got everything I need to fix her. The, uh, the fog light was fairly easy. Just went to Halfords, picked up a replacement. So that shouldn't be a problem. This one was slightly more of a challenge because this connector, which is what I wanted to try and get a replacement for, I couldn't find anywhere that just sells these either empty or with wires attached. I went to Hyundai and they said they could only sell me the entire front end wiring loom for £1,200. So that was a definite no. And then I found someone breaking an i20 and they wanted 50 pounds just for this connector with some wires attached so that was also a definite no i discovered that this bulb in here is called a bay15d which means ba is bayonet fitting y means you've got the posts one higher than the other 15 is the diameter of that and d means dual connection so then it was a case of searching for a bulb holder of one of them, a BAY15D. And I took a punt on one of these. And I say took a punt because the only measurement it had when I was buying it was that it's 37mm across there, which is accurate. So I had to try and take some educated guesses as to whether or not it would fit, and I think it will. The only thing I could see from the picture is I'm probably going to have to cut down some of these tabs. The top one is a lot wider on the replacement than it is on the original. So the first thing I want to check is that the diameter of this bit here, which is what actually goes into the light housing, is the same on both. And they look the same. So if I get the housing, I can push that in and it fits quite nicely until it gets stuck on these tabs. So it's a good start. It's just a case of trimming down these tabs and making it fit. So I'm borrowing Sophie's Dremel because I can't find mine and hers is better. And I'm just going to see if I can trim these down to the point where it'll fit. So I found the Dremel to be a bit too inaccurate and I've actually discovered that I can just kind of shave the plastic off with a knife down to where I want it and that seems to be working a lot better. So I think I've got that tab cut down to good enough size. I'm just going to try a dry run fitting it in the housing. Oh, that's beautiful. That fits right in and stays in. So I'm hoping with the rubber O-ring in as well, if I can get this fucker out again, it will stay in place. Moment of truth. That is... It's pretty solid, it feels a little bit loose. There's a small chance it could vibrate itself free. Okay, so I've noticed the original housing has a thicker O-ring, so I'm gonna try putting the old O-ring on the new housing and I think that should lock it in place. It's 
also feels like a better quality o-ring so it's probably worth doing this either way right there you go oh that's tight that is tight like a tiger i am so happy with that that's awesome so that has properly fixed it for much less money than the alternative options and for any of our regular viewers who have been possibly wondering baby is still not here yet i am in fact filming this on her due date and she has shown no signs of greeting us so hopefully any day now and i really want to get this fixed before she arrives because obviously i'm gonna have a lot less time afterwards and there we have that is now ready to go back in the car right so now that the rain's finally eased up i can start putting this back together and see if what i've done actually works I must say i've quite enjoyed working on the newer car everything sort of comes apart quite easily so now i'm just going to solder the old harness into this light i know there's kind of an age-old debate about whether you should solder on a car's wiring harness but i'm of the opinion that if it's not near the heat or um, vibration of the engine bay it's probably fine to solder now in an ideal world i'd be using um some proper weatherproof car connectors but I don't have any and i want to get this sorted quickly so for now at least i'm just going to solder it I might go back in and put some connectors on another time try my best to shield the soldering iron from the wind that does mean i might also shield the camera from the view but sorry if i do just so much wind it's not getting hot enough Oh, the wind's dying down a bit. Quick, take advantage. Can we shrink the heat shrink in this wind? Right, so that's all finally soldered and heat shrink. It took forever. Soldering outside in like gale force winds is quite difficult, it turns out. So now it's time to find out if it works. It's got the fog light plugged in, running light soldered in go and see if I get light. I'm not going to put the light back yet in case it doesn't work so I'm going to leave it kind of wedged there. Go and see if they work. No, light back in place. There we go. So the light's fully installed. Now I'm just going to try and epoxy on these bits of the bumper that got broken. Don't know how well it's going to work, but it's worth a try. So hopefully the epoxy's had enough time to set now. I've just taken the opportunity to clean up the wheels and rotate them. But I'm not overly optimistic. Oh, that's a good start. Okay. Actually, I think it's worked. I mean, whether it will vibrate free on the road is anyone's guess, but that's better than I thought it would turn out. Now just to button her all back up. And that's everything all back together again. I mean, some small signs of damage. This doesn't fit perfectly anymore. But the clean, that won't show as much. And down here you can see where I actually caught the rock. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with that. Put the wheel back on and she's good. So that's it, all fixed. Just took Stitch out for a quick shakedown. Everything's still in place, working. The lights are all good. So I'm calling that a success. Pretty satisfying to fix something, especially when you're the idiot that broke it. As always, thank you to our Patriners for your continued support. That's awesome. And welcome aboard our newest Patriner, Nathaniel Vorheis. I apologize, I probably just butchered your last name, but welcome aboard. Um, we'll see you again soon.